Time to look at the latest independent sci-fi drama. I'm kind of digging this recent fad. All right, let's go. Thirty twenty-two or three thousand twenty-two, three zero twenty-two. Not really sure, but we're gonna go with thirty twenty-two. Is the story of a group of astronauts stranded on a refueling station between Earth and a new settlement on the other side of the galaxy. When a climactic event occurs, confusion ensues, and everyone has to figure out what to do from here. Sounds pretty simple, but there's a lot more to it. it stars Omar Epps. Where's that guy been? Miranda Cosgrove and Kate Walsh, among a few others that you've seen before. This is a pretty small cast here. The vast majority of the film takes place in one space station. Now don't let this sci-fi setting fool you. This is not a sci-fi action movie. No, no, this is a straight up drama and deals with people and the long-term effects of being isolated out in the middle of space. And on top of that, what they would do when a life-altering climactic event occurs. I'm not gonna give anything away here, but this isn't just some like little event. This is a really big deal, this thing that happens. And that's the basis of the story. What do people do when something so bad happens. The story of 3022 is really interesting and very engaging from beginning to end. It is a slow burn though. It's a drama more in line with the fantastic High Life from earlier this year. Not quite up to the level of High Life though, but it is that type of drama. What do you do when all is seemingly lost? That's definitely the big question in this movie. But also one of the themes is hope. And not just having hope. More how having hope and not having hope affects people in a situation like this. As with any movie like this, its success totally hangs on the performances. There's not a lot of action and big bombastic action scenes to hold your attention. It's all about the performances and the story here. Thankfully, for the most part, they do deliver. Everybody here does a really good job, but I gotta give props to Omar Epps. He does an amazing job here and holds this movie together from beginning to end. While everybody does do a good job, he is a step above everybody else on screen at any given moment. The level of authority that he brings to his character and the nuance he brings to the character really sell it and bring it home. I've never thought Omar Epps was a bad actor, but I've never looked at him as one of the greats either. But much like Robert Pattinson in High Life, Epps does a fantastic job here. Maybe not quite to that level, but he does a really good job. Thankfully, these great performances are given an intriguing story with real stakes that give our characters some very interesting dilemmas that they have to figure out. It's definitely a slow burn, but it's never boring. There are a few parts in the middle section that start to go in that direction, but they pick up fairly quick and get it interesting again. It's not a very long movie, and that really works to its favor. I think that if they had stretched this premise out any longer, it would have ended up with some lulls that would have really broken it all up and resulted in it not working as well as it did. Thankfully though, the story's really tight and keeps you engaged until the end credits. Something the story doesn't do is give you all the answers. Now this is going to bother some people, but in this particular situation that these characters are in, they're just not going to have all the answers. That's just the reality of the situation. Take the aforementioned event, for instance. While we do at some point get more clarity on it and what happened, we never know totally 100% what happened. We know the results of what happened, but we don't fully know what or why it happened. But that's not what the story's about. It's not about what happened, why it happened, or how it happened. It's about the effects of it happening on these people. And one of those effects is you don't know and you're not going to know. The movie does a really good job of keeping you, the viewer, in the dark just as much as them. You're in the dark and kind of confused about exactly what's going on concerning this event for a good amount of the movie. But so are the characters, so you are right there with them not having any more information than they have. And then there's the end of the movie. While I myself did like the ending, I think that it will be kind of polarizing for some people. It does have a satisfying aspect to it, but it's not going to be totally what you want. But much like High Life before it, the way that this movie ends, it does give you resolution to the problem that's been presented in the film. It doesn't really give you anything beyond that. There are some other problems that you kind of want to know how this is going to get worked out. Now, you're not going to get that, but that's not what the movie's about either. Well, yeah, these things are going on in the world of the movie. That's not the story they're telling. That's not what it's about. The problem and the arc that's presented to us is resolved, but that's all you're going to get, and some people aren't going to be okay with that. One place that the movie does trip up is in the effects department. Now, when I say effects, I mean they're CGI. It does leave something to be desired. And by something to be desired, I mean it ain't that great. Thankfully, it is only limited to a couple of scenes. There ain't a lot of CGI in this. You can tell that this is a smaller budgeted movie, and they did CGI only where they absolutely had to. So seeing how there's hardly any in it 
when it does happen while you do see it and you say eh, that's not that great it's really quick and it doesn't really hold much bearing on what's going on now the set design and the overall look of the film looks great it is fairly simple because it all does take place in this one station so the vast majority of it is just a few rooms and a couple of hallways but they utilize that small space to great effect and what's there looks great but like I said what you're here for is not all that you're here for the performances and the story and on that front the movie does deliver the movie is absolutely a slow burn and it's not going to be for everybody but for those of you that enjoyed something like Annihilation or High Life I think that you'll get some enjoyment out of this one I really like what they tried to do here and while it does fall short in a few spots it is mostly successful and because of that it is absolutely worth checking out on Netflix if you're in the mood for a nice cerebral sci-fi drama Check this one out. I don't think you'll be disappointed. So there it is, guys, my review of 3022. If you enjoyed and want more content like this, hit that subscribe button and help my little channel grow. If you liked what I had to say, give me a thumbs up. If not, let me know in the comments below why. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. It's so empty. I spent the whole movie trying to figure out what 3022 meant. You find out from the beginning, it's not the year. And the whole time, I was just wondering, what does 3022 mean? What does it have to do with this story? And then at the end of the movie, when you find out what 3022 means, you're just kind of like, oh, what? Really? Okay. I mean, it's not bad. I mean, I guess I kind of see the relevance of it and why they may have called the movie that. But honestly, the number doesn't have as big a deal to do with things as I thought it would. I thought that revelation was going to be a little bigger. Still a good movie though.